Are you ready to see how easy it is to wire a network jack for PoE in your home or office space? If I can do it, so can you. Keep on watching to see how it went. I did this install at our virtual demo space we're building out. This is where we hosted our Bixi seminars, so check out that playlist linked below for more information on this space. Let's start by going over the tools that I used. You'll see a measuring tape, a pencil, a level, a data drop kit, a drill, some really long drill bits, and a Dremel. If you don't have this drop in a box kit, you'll also need the category cable, a wire stripping, cutting, and crimping tools, and a single gang bracket. You'll need a screwdriver as well. The drop in a box kit comes with a face plate, but we're using a different product in its place, which you'll see later on in this video. Aside from the 200 feet of cable, here are the tools from the drop kit that were helpful in this install. My first step is to measure how high I want this PoE jack to be. The typical height for a wall jack like this is 12 to 18 inches. I measured out about 30 inches based on the design concept we have for this room. Once the height is marked, I can mark and level out the single gang bracket placement. Now I'm ready to use the Dremel to cut out the space for the mounting bracket. Remember to wear your safety goggles. This isn't actually drywall that I'm penetrating, so it was a little easier to get through. If needed, you might have to go back over the corners like I did, just to make sure the opening clears out very easily. For good measure, wipe away any dust or dirt on the wall after using the Dremel. For this next step, I called in Tyler to help me out. I didn't feel super comfortable drilling through two studs while on this ladder, so I called him in as backup. What he's doing here is drilling through the studs between the walls to create an opening to fish our cabling through. This drill and bit combination definitely has some kickback to it, so please use it carefully and always wear protective equipment. After each hole, he changes out the bit and makes sure the openings are even. The last hole was pretty difficult to drill into since we couldn't see down the cut and had to be careful about not drilling into the wall. Spoiler alert, he did it successfully. Once the openings are made, I prepare the cable to be fed through the wall. To do this, I took electrical tape and secured my cable to this pole or fishing rod. Fishing the cable through the openings was quite a task. Similar to Tyler drilling the holes, it's nearly impossible to see down the way, so it's a feeling game with you and the cable rod. It took me a few tries, but I finally got it down the last opening near the wall bracket. Word of advice for this next step, don't secure your tape too tightly, or at least consider leaving a tab to grasp onto. After I fed the cable down the opening, I had to reach into the bracket cutout and undo the tape with one hand. It took a minute, but I got there. You can see how happy I was to pull the cable through. Now that the cable is where I needed it, I secured the single gang bracket to the opening I previously cut out. This part was quick and easy. If the measurements are correct, it'll fit right in and all you need to do is screw the tabs down to secure it. And here's a quick montage of me using a nail gun to secure the ethernet cable to the wall boards as I run it to the location of our switch. Now I'm using the wire cutting tool to cut off any excess cable and customize the length I need. To better hide the cable, I'm working to hide it behind this wall and run it behind the switch setup. This might not be a new hack for you, but what helped me run this behind the wall easier was my tape measure. If you run the measuring tape behind the wall, you can tape the cable to it so that when you retract it, it pulls right through. You want to make sure your tape measure hits the wall where you can access it and then secure your cable. Then just pull your cable through and check to make sure it's long enough to reach your switch port. This next step of adding the RJ45 connector was actually my favorite part. Before you cut, strip, and crimp, be sure to add your RJ45 boot to the cable, otherwise it's nearly impossible to add it later on. I eyeballed about an inch or so of wire and used the same tool to strip the wire jacket. Another hack, don't throw away this jacket you just took off. This will come in handy later on. Once the jacket is off, spread out all the wires to look like a starfish and carefully use the scissors to cut out the plastic guard in the middle. Here's where the extra jacket piece comes into play. Instead of untwisting the wires by hand, use this jacket. Simply pull the end of one twisted pair free with your nail and slide it into the jacket. 
Then just twist the jacket along the wire until it's free. The jacket is also helpful because you could use it to help pull the wire straight after you untwist it. Big thanks to Tyler for showing me this trick. Hopefully y'all can use it too. Our crimping tool came with this nice reference booklet to confirm the pinout order of the cable. I'm following the T568B pinout, so I double checked the guide to make sure my colors were in the right order. For T568B, I wanted them to be in this order. Orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. I still have to work at straightening out the wires so they can easily fit inside the connector. It's helpful to move them side to side. This helps the wires stiffen out and stay in place. Once they're lined up, you can cut them to get a straight edge. Make sure they're still in the right pinout order and carefully slide on your RJ45 connector. You want to make sure to slide it on in the right direction as well. The bronze or copper pins should be facing you as you slide in the wires. The side with the clip should be facing away from you. You'll also want to leave a little bit of extra cable sticking out so you can crimp it and cut off the excess. Crimp it down, slide your boot up, and this end is done and ready to connect to your switch. Now just repeat this process at the end where your mounting bracket is. Instead of a network jack or outlet, I'm installing our GBT4IW. This is an in-wall gigabit PoE extender switch with IEEE 802.3BT uplink power. Simply bring in one cable run with 802.3BT power into the uplink port and you instantly have four ports of output PoE. With a 60 watt maximum output, you can power up to four 802.3AF devices or two 802.3AT devices. As you can see, it fits the size of a standard electrical outlet receptacle for a clean flush to wall installation. I'll link this product in the description box so y'all can check it out. Watch our other videos for different PoE projects or to learn more about our products. What a fun project. I really hope y'all enjoyed it. If you want to see us do more projects like this, let us know by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Be sure you hit that bell icon, that way you don't miss out on any of our uploads. If there's a POE project you want to see us do, let us know by leaving a comment down below. And before we go, don't forget to check out our other social channels too. We're active on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and now Amazon. See y'all next time.